We'll call the meeting to order. Call the roll, please. Sean? Here. Sean? Here. Karen? Here. Here. Finley? Here. Rutherford? Here. Shaw? Here. Salton? Here. Thank you. Uh, would you all please stand and join me in the recitation of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Also join me in the flag salute. Attention, position, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item one, consider approval of the consent agenda. May we adopt. Commissioner Herod, move we adopt the consent Second. agenda. Second by Commissioner Bouchon. Is there any discussion? Uh, call the question. Motion carries seven. Oh. Item two, citizens participation. Uh, if you have, would like to address the commission, come forward to the podium, uh, tell us who you are, sign in, and uh, and speak your piece. You know, I just can't uh, stand. Holly, Holly can't stand. It, I can't so. stand it. I'm, I'm always up here. Um, thank you. So I just wanted to let you all know that um, last Friday was third Friday, downtown Shawnee, and I wanted to thank the city manager's office for being really, really helpful for helping us close the street for just a few hours just in our block. We partnered with Community Renewal and the block leaders, and we had the party wagon come down. It's a, it's a trailer with a barbecue grill and a tent and tables and chairs, and we sat it up, and block leaders came out, and we grilled vegetables, and they handed them out and talked about how awesome it is to be a block leader um, with community renewal. So we did bubbles and had live music, and it was right smack in the middle of Main Street, Shawnee, Oklahoma. So um, it was great. So the next opportunity will be the third Friday in September. Come on down to Main Street and see what's happening in our town. What time of the day does this happen? About yeah. 6 to eh, about 9 o'clock. Is there a football game that night? <laughs> you know, maybe. There was, now I will say there was a Thunder game on a couple of months ago at the same time, and um, one of our friends brought down his flat screen TV, and we plugged it in, and by golly, the, football, or the, the basketball game was on um, for those who were interested in making sure they didn't miss anything. So thank you. That may happen. You get an attaboy. I uh, think. <laughs> <laughs> Item three: presentation by the city manager to employee of the month, Ashley Bione, Utility Billing Customer Service Department. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you, Ashley. Please come forward. It's my pleasure to introduce to the commission tonight, uh, Ashley Bione. Uh, Ashley began working for the water department in March 2016 as the billing clerk. Over that time, she has shown that her customer service skills are second to none. Recently, a customer showed up with a pie for the department, actually. I did not get a piece, either. Uh, it seems the customer accidentally mailed stamps along with her water bill, and someone, that being Ashley, um, had mailed the stamps right back to their rightful owner. She's not only dependable, but has a sharp memory with accounts and customers, proving to be a positive asset to the city. Uh, when she's not at work, Ashley enjoys uh, spending, her, spending her spare time with family, and taking care of her uh, chickens and ducks. She is married and they also have one son who is four. Ashley, thank you for your contributions. <laughs> Ashley, they're trying to get a pic, there you go. She also gets an attaboy. You know, that's the kind of thing that used to get in starology when we had starology in the Shawnee News Star. <laughs> Back we way. have a proclamation for a <laughs> blueprint graduate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tiffany. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Not necessary. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brooklyn Benjamin, and I, along with my business partner, Jacob Crouch, own Scissor Tail Skydiving that operates out at the Shawnee Regional Airport. Um, Would you sign in for us? I sure will do that. I'm Thank sorry. you. Um, in case you guys don't know much about us, we are in our fourth year of operation here in Oklahoma. Um, I was originally, I have a skydiving business out in Tennessee, and four years ago we started looking to expand here into Oklahoma and settled on Shawnee because of the distance to the city, the airport and the options for hangar space there, and just the people in the community. We were really excited by the small town feel that we found here. Um, in the four years that we've been in operation, we have successfully thrown 4,580 people out of a perfectly good airplane and landed them all safely back on the ground. Um, we have also, during that time, given um, or spent about $90,000 at the airport, both in hangar lease and facility lease and fuel cells. Um, we thoroughly enjoy the community here and the city. We've been warmly received by every business owner community member you know we have random people that show up at the airport just to watch us jump and they're like you know we absolutely love to see the parachutes in the sky and we think it's so fun that you're here in our city um you know these people when they come in to jump they're not only jumping out of the airplane and it's coming to our business they come and make a day out of it they're going to the local restaurants to eat lunch they are if the weather gets bad, they're spending the night so that they can jump the next day at a hotel. Um, they're going to the shops and the mall and Walmart and all of that kind of stuff. Um, while we have been very happy with the city and the reception that we've received from the community here, we have had difficulty with the airport itself. And that is um, the reason that I'm coming to you guys tonight is just to make you aware of the situation and ask that maybe you take a little bit of time to help us continue our safe operation and the success of our business, which also contributes to the success of the airport and the city as a whole. Um, during our times, we have, my business partner has had degrading, demeaning comments made to him in front of others uh, regarding his role and his position. He's been called a an airport bum or a skydiving bum when in fact he is a business owner that's contributing vastly to the economy there at that airport. We have difficulties getting the grass mowed in our landing area and I don't know how much you know about skydiving but a nice level surface of mowed grass is very important for the safety of our jumpers. If those jumpers are coming in and they can't gauge the depth of the grass or what's underneath that grass, we can easily have broken bones or twisted ankles or something like that. And it is quite challenging to have the land landing area mode, which is a part of our lease agreement. Um, you know, I have lots of documentation here. Um, I don't know how much detail you would like me to go into, but I would just ask you guys, you know, Hey, come skydive with us. Come see our operation. We'd love to have you and be any assistance that you guys could provide or that kind of thing. We would greatly appreciate. I'm a, I'm aware of your issues, and uh, and it's inexcusable that there would be any demeaning comments in either direction. But uh, at this point, we view this as a management issue, and we would like for you all to sit down with airport management and city management and see if you can work this out if it we rises to the level to. that this commission needs to consider it then we will but okay. we'd like for you to try to work it out first and uh, and appreciate your comments and we Perfect. want you to be treated fairly and my wife tried to get me to do that but i outsmarted her and went to golf course <laughs> <laughs> so, i'll make it my but goal I, but I, we, but I we, bet it the took, flat landing area is a big deal absolutely no, it took i know you're bringing a lot of people right. in and and we hear about it and, and they enjoy the sport and, Absolutely. Well, I tell you, it took us eight years, but I finally got the mayor at our in our town well, in you're not going to get Tennessee the mayor to do, to do it. it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep trying. You may get the vice mayor to do it, or the ex mayor. But what? Uh, over the course next door to OBU, uh, Wilson.
we'll stop and wait and watch him come down and get back out in the course. <laughs> nice. You're welcome to try. But I'll, I will keep trying. Don't spend a lot of calories. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll do is we'll make it a fundraiser. So we'll do something. It, it better raise a lot of funds. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm sorry to have skipped. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Jacob Crutch. I'll sign in here. You don't wear a tie when you jump out of airplanes, do you? No, I do not. Me neither. <laughs> um, hold it, pardon. Um, again, I really enjoy being here. Um, not in the current circumstances that I'm that I'm here talking to you guys, but uh, the city of Shawnee has been really good to me. Um, Part of the miscommunication that started uh, our relationship with the airport is uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Uh, when we first made an agreement with Mr. English to uh, take space in Hangar 13, he made both of us believe that Enterprise would not be in that space as let, well. Let me, let me interrupt you. Uh, we, I've asked that, that you all get together and see if you can work all this out. So okay. I, I really don't particularly care at this point well I, I the details well, well I'm, I'm going to explain to you how I have tried to I'm, I'm just going to explain how I'm, I've gone I'm about gonna, my process I'm, I'm going to give it another try yeah, I, I'm gonna step in this is for you to make comment but the commissioners and the mayor particularly aren't really allowed by law to engage in any question and answer okay I'm, I'm just I'm just going to make a comment then all right so during that process uh it took a year to get Enterprise out of the hangar. Um, after that, they were driving their vehicles past my aircraft and past the operation area. Um, to, get the, to get the results I needed, I actually had to call the FAA and have the FISDO come down. And the airport, and this is after I went to the airport board meeting and asked for their help. And they said they would help me and nothing happened. Um, that's why we're here now. Uh, the, airport manager mr english told the fisdo that we were being non-compliant and i've never received a letter from keenan saying we were non-compliant not officially um i do have an email uh asking for us not to park in front of the hangar door and that's about it um i don't like the stress level that's there i would like to, it to be better but the reason we're here is because we have tried to talk to the airport management um we will do that again. Mr. Erickson is going to meet with you as well. Okay. But uh, again, we like being here. We would like to stay here. But with the current conditions that we're getting treated, it doesn't feel like the city wants us here, even though all of you say you do, because of the airport management. And uh, thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. And please come out and skydive with us. Even if you're scared, it's supposed to be scary. That's I'm not scared. Talking. I'm just smarter. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Um, I will. All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay. Now, item four: Blueprints Graduate Day. Uh, Tiffany Walker, if you join me. Good. Blueprints Graduate Day. Whereas poverty can and does affect entire families in any community, and whereas the organization known as Blueprints focuses on giving back in order to build a better community for everyone through educational events that provide basic necessities to families while educating them on local resources available in the community, and whereas the graduates of Blueprints, drafting success, dedicate themselves to this program by offering hope in the place of hopelessness resources to those who are struggling and recognition for a job well done and whereas individuals and organizations consistently and unselfishly donate their time resources skills and talents to ensure that the barriers that have existed in the past are no longer present giving each person in our thriving community the opportunity to have a future worth living for and whereas the purpose of blueprints graduate day is to inspire others to come together in order to build a better community for everyone and now therefore be it resolved that this commission hereby honors all graduates of the Blueprints 
drafting success program for their hard work, community involvement, and personal achievements. May the years to come be filled with continued success and achievement for all the Blue Bridge graduates. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. In briefly, or no, just a minute. On behalf of Blue Prince, I would like to say thank you to the city of Shawnee for recognizing our graduates for their hard work. These graduates have shown dedication and drive to accomplishing their goals, but more importantly, our graduates demonstrate that no matter the circumstances, no matter where you are from, and no matter your background, you can be successful. But also have the powerful ability to make a positive impact on our community. We encourage everyone to assist in our overall goal of building bridges for a better community for everyone. And I'm so proud of y'all. Item four, consideration of a resolu resolution designating the city of Shawnee Commission Chambers as the Bertha Ann Young Commission Chambers. suggest we um, read the title and vote and then you could come down and present it to the family. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Salter, second by everyone. Commissioner <laughs> Gillum. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Call the question. Commissioner, I'll read the resolution title. The resolution designating the city of Shawnee City Commission Chambers as Bertha and Young City Commission Chambers. Call the question. Motion carries seven zero. Okay, several. Resolution designating the city of Shawnee City Commission Chambers as Bertha Ann Young City Commission Chambers. Whereas Bertha Ann Young commenced her employment with the city of Shawnee on August 9th, 1948, and has served the city and its inhabitants starting with the entry level clerk and progressing through the years as assistant cashier, deputy city clerk, acting city clerk, and finally in December of 1970, she was appointed by the mayor and the board of city commissioners to become city treasurer on January 1st, 1971. And whereas Bertha Ann Young dedicated herself to the betterment of this community and demonstrated a genuine love for Shawnee, by serving its inhabitants in an unselfish and loyal manner and elected to retire on August 31st, 1999. And whereas Bertha Ann Young served on the Oklahoma Municipal Retirement Board of Trustees from 1978 through 2017 and assisted with making important decisions for the many employees of municipalities throughout the state of Oklahoma. And whereas Bertha Ann Young served at different times as president of the Oklahoma Municipal Treasurers Association the Governmental Finance Officers Association of Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma Municipal Clerks, Treasurers, and Finance Officials. And whereas it is both fitting and proper for this governing body to officially name the City Commission Chambers in her honor for her distinguished service to the city and its inhabitants. Whereas the Mayor and City Commissioners of the City of Shawnee wish to thank Bertha Ann Young and honor her for her service to the City of Shawnee and to the community. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Major and by the mayor and city commissioners of the city of Shawnee, that the mayor and city commissioners on behalf of the citizens of Shawnee express gratitude to Bertha Ann Young for her dedicated service to the city of Shawnee. The city commission chambers of the city of Shawnee shall hereafter be called the Bertha Ann Young City Commission Chambers. Would the family please join us?
Item six, consideration of a resolution of support for safe routes to school. Mr. Mayor, Commission members, this resolution of support is on your agenda for consideration. Um, this is part of our um, ongoing efforts with, with Blue Zones. This was at, at their request. Uh, I will say the city de uh, uh, definitely supports safe routes to schools. We have applied and received funding previously. We look forward to applying um, for additional state funding to make safe connections to schools in the future as well. So staff does recommend approval of this resolution. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is there any discussion? Do we actually have a list of safe routes for our school systems? No, ma'am, we don't. We do not. Is that something we will be looking at doing? I th yes, I think as part of our, we have four years left uh, with our Avitas partnership. Um, and in addition, there may be other grant opportunities we can pursue. So uh, absolutely, I think our, our, in fact, some of the improvements that have just been made over the last month or so have been to, to, to get those safe routes to school. If you've driven um, along Center Street and in Independence, you'll see that sidewalk work going on right now. And then the sidewalks were replaced on Wallace to provide safe uh, access to that elementary school. So, uh, but yes, ma'am, we do need to, we do, need to uh, do a better job of, of uh, uh, identifying problem. those. Our first one that we did was safe for approach to school was from the apartments uh, north back to the middle school. Yes, sir. Yeah, we did that about uh, three or four years ago. Yeah. I move we adopt the resolution. Motion by Commissioner Harris. Second. Second by Commissioner Rutherford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution of support for safe routes to school. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I thought there was. I thought there sure was going to be more. <coughs> kind of like jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> Punch us up so we can vote. Motion carries seven zero. Item seven: Consideration of resolution supporting Pot Pottawatomie County Food Policy Council. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. This is um, another item that was requested uh, by Blue Zones. Uh, this one is, um, has uh, a little more detail. It establishes the Pottawatomie County Food Policy Council, and there's a re resolution of support for that council, um, uh, actually. Uh, and it also designates them as Shawnee's official food advisory council. It, um, as part of that council, there's a, the de details are in the resolution regarding the uh, council's purpose, as well as the membership. Um, and their terms. Uh, one member is appointed by, um, by city government. This does not appoint that member at this time, so that would be a future action at, a, at another meeting where you would appoint your representative to this um, council. There are members of uh, Blue Zones uh, staff and, and volunteers here to answer any, any more questions that you have about this if I, if I don't know the answer. So, any questions? I, I didn't notice any menus on there. <laughs> <laughs> No, sir, no, no menu at this time. I had noticed in part of this language, and I can't pull this up on my system here, but it did indicate that there would be like some grant planning and uh, policy development and uh, this action. Who would that come before? This council or this the city commission or how will that Yes, ma'am. I think it would function um, similar to like the planning commission where, where this uh, body would, um, would make recommendations, devise policy, but then any, of course, any official adoption for, for um, that would be enforced or, or administered by the city would, would require uh, your review and approval. This yeah, would be along the line of what I read recently about the need for farmer's markets for uh, <laughs> produce is a, a big, big problem to uh, have sufficient amounts and cause the prices people can afford, so I appreciate that. This policy is not unique to Shawnee. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a county-wide thing, and as such, we have no jurisdiction over this council. What we're discussing is an endorsement of the council's actions. Uh, they, they will be approaching other cities within the county and, and other jurisdictions, I presume, Rachel, right? That's correct. Right. Is there any further discussion? So I guess I didn't understand that because I just heard two different things, I believe. One was that this council would with their recommendations come before the city with those recommendations if they had to do with the city of Shawnee. But you're saying that they will not, so educate. I, I, no, they, they will come before us, 
but this is not a, a matter of our passing a, an ordinance, so to speak. It's an endorsement of their policy if when it's fully implemented from the policy council, that if we approve of it, then we would endorse it. It's not something that's got any teeth. Okay, so it is something that will come here that we will yes, still but recognize. Our, but our jurisdiction is not exclusive. Right, because it's a countywide, there may be things that come out of this body that don't require your review or approval, um, but certainly anything, if it's gonna, if it's gonna deal with um, city ordinances, regulations, um, um, city commitments in terms of financing or other, other public use for farmers markets or what, whatever it may be, then, then absolutely it will come back to you. So these things are enumerated in the needs that we have pretty much recognized and, and then uh, recognized in what's being put in place to uh, attack those problems. And you said this is already a recognized council. Are those individuals here, any of those on the council? Rachel, would you like to address that? Good evening, Council. Uh, Rachel Milo, and I am the director of the Blue Zones Project. And uh, Jason Draper, um, title? I'm, uh, I work at St. Anthony Hospital, <laughs> director of food service. <laughs> and uh, Jason's actually um, on one of the committees that is forming this food council. I just returned from Minneapolis, which is considered uh, a city very progressive in their, in their food policy and adoption and connectivity from the farmers and growers really to the consumer and uh, restaurants, grocers, et cetera. And this policy council is generally considered kind of a first step to looking at your county's resources, needs, and, and looking at them in a more holistic way. Uh, the state of Oklahoma actually had a food council for um, about five years that they used to, to start several programs and then it was dissolved. Uh, that could very well happen to this particular council. It, it's at a place where we have a lot of supply or we have a lot of demand, but there's this Grand Canyon between them of connecting the dots. And so this council will look at, at that, among many other things, as a way to, to think about our food environment for the county as a whole. And to the, the mayor's point, <laughs> We're asking that every government within our county actually adopt and support uh, the council as an advisory role so that if, if it crosses borders, if you will, from out of town to in town and et cetera, that we really have joint support and effort. And we have several people uh, from a lot of different areas. Uh, we have farmers, growers, grocers, et cetera, that, that are represented in this idea being presented to you. I guess my hesitancy on this isn't for the fact that you're going to do work and a lot of it, it sounds like here for the city of Shawnee. <laughs> and I certainly appreciate that. It's just that the language that I saw within this resolution appeared to me that uh, you were going to be developing policy and doing uh, some grant actions that included the city of Shawnee's name on it. And my concern is when policy is written, the city of Shawnee should be able to see that. Yes, we, we have no authority to write policy. We only have the authority to present policy ideas to the city. Okay, all right, thank you. I thank sure you. appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I move we adopt the regulation supporting our Pot County Food Policy Council. Second. Commissioner Harris, second, please the second. Second. Commissioner Shaw. Call the question. Your Honor, I got another one. No, it's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> a resolution supporting the Pottawatomie County Food Policy Council. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't call one at the same time. I do that every time. Call second. <laughs> Motion carries 7 0. Oh. Item 8 presentation regarding 25th anniversary of the International Finals Youth Rodeo by Chairman of the Shawnee Civic and Cultural Development Authority. Mayor, Commissioners, um, thank you for allowing us to come this evening. We, we were very excited this past July. Um, we had the 25th version, 
silver anniversary for the International Finals Youth Rodeo. The event began in 1993 here in Shawnee. It is, um, it is, it is an event that is the brainchild of, of a former director at the Expo, Ken Etchison. Um, you, you know, with the goal to have an event that would bring people from all over the United States and hopefully foreign countries into Shawnee. And, and uh, uh, this event has certainly done that this past summer. We had almost 900 contestants come from, uh, um, they were in uh, 1,500 events. There were 11 performances. It lasted from Sunday evening through Friday evening. Um, the uh, 30, I believe, Chris, there were 34 states. Uh, we had contestants from Australia here. Uh, we have in the past had uh, uh, a contestants from uh, three different Canadian provinces. So truly we have an international finals youth rodeo held in Shawnee, Oklahoma. We would like to, as a partner with the city of Shawnee, we'd like to present the mayor and the commission a 25-year um, uh, commemorative plaque that, 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 that we'd like to be. Wait a minute, Mayor, if you would. <laughs> we'd like to get a picture of all of you, maybe, because, because uh, we have this uh, plaque that we'd like to be uh, uh, asked to be hung in the city hall to, you know, to kind of show our partnership. And then also, we have a picture taken with a drone. Uh, Ed Bolt took that for us on Tuesday night, which was pink night. Um, kind of shows a little bit of the size and scope of the event held at the expo. That was taken about eight o'clock in the evening. It was a little, it was warm that evening. So by nine o'clock, those stands were full. But we, you know, we've got about two thirds of the stands full. So, so um, uh, also have with me tonight a uh, trustee. Carl Packwood, Trustee Rachel Milo, and the manager at the Expo, Chris Dunlap. So we'd like to ask maybe if you guys would stand and stand back there and we'd come up in front of you and come on. Maybe have a, a <laughs> photo taken and uh, and uh, and and then also City Manager Dustin Erickson's part of our trustee board as well. So we'd like for him to be in the picture. Thank you all very much. If, if the public doesn't know this, this is our event. When we first started this rodeo, it wasn't me because it was, it was a, a, another group. We, we had a rodeo that we brought here from somewhere else and they took it away from us. And Etchison's idea was, well, we'll solve that. We'll just start our own. So this is an event that, that's born and raised here in Shawnee. We own it and it's going to come back as long as we treat these people right. And, they do an unbelievable job out there. If y'all have never been out there, you need to go. I think Chris ran some numbers this past summer. Chris, there were somewhere in the last 25 years, there have been somewhere over 24,000 something contestants that have been through the gates of the expo. You know, you know, these are high school uh, rodeo athletes. So you times that by four times they have a parent, a grandparent and siblings. So that's, you know, I mean, that's, well over a hundred thousand people that have been just for the one event. So, what about uh, the volunteers? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! You know, we can't say enough at the Expo Center about the volunteers. We have almost 500 volunteers that, and uh, and this past year, we recognized we had about 14 volunteers that have been for all 25 years. Oh. Um, 
we have between four and 500 volunteers every year, people that take their vacation, uh, people that bring their families. They, you know I mean? We have such an outpouring of, of, uh, of uh, support for this event and you guys are certainly our partner at the expo and we appreciate you, so. That started the second year that I was on city commission before, so I remember oh, wow. the beginnings of that and, and how tough it was to get it going. But it, even at that point in time, we saw a remarkable movement from the, from the community as well to, to get it, get it mo and move in motion. So, uh, and it's sure come a long way. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Thank Randy. You. Item nine, public hearing and consideration of an ordinance closing the right of way of a tract of land in the west half of the west half of the southwest quarter of section five, township 10 north range four east, beginning at the northwest corner of lot 10 of Harrison Park edition, fence west 35 feet, fence south 147.5 feet, fence east 35 feet, fence north 147.5 feet to the point of beginning. Applicant Greg Brown home. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. This request comes before us today from Mr. John Shepard, property owner adjacent to this particular piece of right of way. Um, the general location here would be north of MacArthur on Harrison Street. Uh, there on 35th, which is just south of where Van's pig stand is at. Uh, the request for closure is really to accommodate a building permit that was just approved uh, for Mr. Shepard's lot. He's requesting an additional 35 feet of right of way closed in order to uh, add additional parking to this particular space. This right of way is not only city right of way, it's also state right of way. And, and for a little background, it's a bit unique in this particular area. There's about an 800 feet stretch of uh, right of way going north to south where there's an additional 50 foot along the east side. So it's quite substantial on the east side of Harrison that we have this right of way. The city itself has no public lines uh, in this little stretch, about 35 feet wide by about 140 feet. Um, so, so there's really no objection from, from city staff. We have by state statute notified all franchise holders for this particular easement. We heard back from two in particular, so Vive and OG&E, basically with the concern that by closing this right of way, they will no longer be able to maintain the equipment uh, that they have within these easements and I contacted both personally and reassured them that again by not only state statute but by city ordinance uh, by closing this right of way rather than vacating the city can always reopen this this easement this right of way and all of these perpetual easements exist and stay and remain so by closing it that never changes the uh, each one of these franchise holders still have every right to repair, maintain, move, and access their equipment. Staff recommendation to approve. Staff does recommend approving and, and certainly has no objection. We, we had uh, one of our engineering staff members go out and, and survey this particular piece of property just to be double sure we didn't have water lines, storm sewer lines, anything in there. So uh, even if we do close this today, they still, in order to do this parking law, would have to have an agreement with, with ODOT, the Department of Transportation, in order to use that land. So not only the right to use it, but also them as being the owners of that particular land would have to approve it as well. But, but yes, yeah, staff, staff has no objection. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Is there any budgetary impact to us? I heard you say the city did have some, a particular interest in it out there. Sure, we, uh, so it's by plat, it was dedicated to the city, a portion of this right of way with, without having any easements in there and closing, there's, there's no, no issue that the city has. Vacating on the other hand would be really getting rid of, rid of that from the city to that property owner, which is not the case quite yet. That, that'll, if that were to come to fruition, uh, the city would get notified and have its chance to object uh, along with any adjacent property owners as well. So the OG&E and, and the Vive, actually their lines are on that uh, <coughs> south edge of the property, aren't they? Don't they go behind the property there on the south? That's what I understand, yes, sir. Well, I went out and looked at it Sunday, and that's what it looks like to me is on the south edge of the property there. Uh, I need to declare 
the uh, public hearing open. If there is someone here who is in favor, would like to speak in favor of the proposition. My name's Carl Packwood. I think most of you know me. Um, I just think that if there's a way that, that this can be worked out to where this property can be used for the purpose that he's asking for, we've got a person, local person, wanting to spend dollars in Shawnee to improve property. He could spend it anywhere he wants to spend it. He chooses to, he's bought several properties in Shawnee and he wants to buy and he wants to utilize another spot. So I think that's a, that's a good reason to really look and make sure that you know, if this can be used, it can be used for the purpose he's asking. Thank you for your comment. Anyone else? Is there anyone present that would like to speak in opposition to the proposal? Is there a motion? I we have approved to here. Commissioner Harris moves to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner Rutherford. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> An ordinance closing the right of way of the tract of land in the west half of the west half of the southwest quarter of section 5, Township 10 North, range 4 east, beginning at the northwest corner of lot 10 of the Harrison Park edition, thence west 35 feet, thence south 147.5 feet, thence east 35 feet, thence north 147.5 feet to the point of beginning. To the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, according to the recorded plot thereof, specifically describing said street reserving the right to reopen said street, reserving utilities, and declaring an emergency. Call the question. <coughs> Motion carries six ayes, one abstention. I don't is there a motion on the emergency clause? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Commissioner Harry, second. Second. Commissioner Rutherford, call the question. Motion carries six <coughs> ayes, one nay. Item 10, discussion and consideration of approval of a resolution to approve potential amendment of the city's tax increment financing district and the possible creation of a second such district directing the preparation of an amended and restated project plan and the appointment of a review committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commission members. This is a follow-up item. You might recall on your July 17th uh, Commission meeting, you approved a contract with the Center for Economic Development Law, which um, kind of unofficially kicked off the process of taking a look at our downtown improvement district. This action tonight, um, by approving this resolution, that this will um, kick off the official a review process, which includes the establishment of a review committee. And so this resolution um, um, identifies uh, the mayor as the one for the city serving on that committee. And then it notes the other um, review committee members will be, um, will be set forth by their respective entities. Uh, those entities are all um, taxing jurisdictions, uh, uh, and plus the Shawnee Planning Commission. And so that includes Pottawatomie County Pioneer Library System, Pottawatomie County Health Department, Gordon Cooper Technology Center, uh, and of course, Shawnee Public Schools. So this resolution, again, does, not, uh, um, does nothing else except just set the stage uh, for this process, officially kicks off the review committee. Um, right now, based on the calendar um, that we have with the consultant, we are looking at um, wrapping this entire process, process up um, by your December 4th meeting. So um, the review committee will meet uh, two to three times over the between now and December 4th. Uh, to, to do its work of reviewing uh, the plans and, and the uh, projects. And uh, this will all be presented back to you for uh, final consideration uh, in November and December. Be happy to answer any questions that you have. Questions? Thank you. Have, have we looked at what the, have we done a benefit cost analysis or even considered one uh, being done on that? Has this? I mean, I hear what you're saying about this being a secondary district and that we're getting ready to set up a review committee, mm -hmm. but 
I'm still hesitant over some of the same issues I'd stated before on this is will this help us budgetarily and what impact will could this potentially have? Yeah. Um, really, really good question, um, Commissioner Sean. I appreciate the opportunity to answer it. Um, I think that this will, will present, uh, I think that, that the staff time and the, time and the expense with the consultant um, will be worth it. And, I'll, and the reason I feel that way is because if you look back at what's been done the previous 13 years, we actually collected about $700,000. So we believe our consultant expenses and staff time expenses will be probably um, thirty to forty thousand um, uh, dollars between now and, and December to get this approved but then in perpetuity or at least in, through the expiration of the uh, TIF district then we'll be accruing those benefits accruing um, funds into that account so um, a couple other points um, one of the things that we're going to look at is uh, that we will look at with this review committee is the extent of the district and so obviously we're looking at um, continuing the improvements to, on Kickapoo Street uh, south to Maine, um, and so we may be able to capture some of the redevelopment that occurs there. Um, we've looked, there's other major improvements being done uh, in downtown, such as the improvements at Shawnee Mill. So I believe that we can, um, we can capture uh, significant funds uh, relative to the cost of, for staff to administer this program and, and to keep it going. Um, uh, lastly, I would add that the original TIP district um, expires after 15 years. Uh, state law actually allows you to go to, to 25. So uh, we may be in a situation where we can um, extend our current one longer um, and or establish a second district that would go out a full 25 years. And what that means is, you know, then all of a sudden, even though it may be many years down the road, that redevelopment along Kickapoo Street or other parts of downtown, we can actually capture and, and, um, and use. So I hope that answers your question. Actually, it doesn't cost the city because we're talking about ad valorem taxes. So it costs the right. school and the county. So there's a reason that they're involved that they have to agree to it. And the schools have to agree to it. Any, and the way that's set up is any additional taxes or any improvements will go into the TIF district and the, the uh, taxes will kind of be stay safe or even be at the level of what it is when it starts. I see you looking at that, Joe. That is correct. That's absolutely correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Yeah, I move we adopt it. Commissioner Hare, move we adopt. Second. Second by Commissioner Gillen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A resolution declaring the intent to consider approval of an amendment to to and restatement of the Shawnee Downtown Revitalization Project Plan, including amending increment district number one and creating an additional tax increment district under the Local Development Act directing preparation of an amended and restated project plan, appointing a review committee, directing the review committee to make findings as to eligibility and financial impact, if any, on tax and jurisdictions and business activities within the district, and directing the review committee to make a recommendation with respect to the proposed amended and restated project plan. Thank you, call the question. Commissioner Hare, move carries 7 oh. item number 11 uh, I, I am told that items 11 12 13 14 15. well it renders 15 moot and 16 moot uh, that there will be in the interest of saving time there will be a, a motion to defer those until the, the June general election. How about this table on them and then we won't put a date on it. What should we do? Vice Mayor, if we table those, that they will, by requirement, show up on the next regular meeting's okay. agenda, which I don't think alleviates the concern uh, that is being addressed with, with passing those. Uh, I would suggest either deferring them to a specific meeting or taking no okay. action tonight so that they can be placed after the November special election by the deadline. Okay. Thank you. Do you have, is there a motion? Do we do, we do them all at once or do you, are you going to need Make five different, all. five different motions? <laughs> I, I'm going to upset everybody, but I would like each agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Item number 11, is there a motion? To defer that uh -huh. to uh, November 11th? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
appropriate to the June election. I don't know the date. Uh, it would be sometime in March, I would think. There aren't there notice requirements? Correct, and I don't know what that deadline is. I mean, why don't we, um, well, of course, we could do it early too. Why don't, why don't we just say the sit first meeting in March, okay. March 5th? So so motion to defer to March 5th agenda? Yes. By Commissioner Rutherford? Second. Second by Commissioner Herod. <coughs> any discussion? Call the question. Motion carries seven zero. Item twelve. Same item. I make the motion to defer to the March. Shaw move to move, defer to March fifth meeting. Second. Or second by Commissioner Bashan. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Item 13. Is there a motion? So moved. Commissioner Shaw. Second. Second. Right, Commissioner Herod. Call the question. Uh, we, we, motion to defer to motion March to defer. Okay, to March yes. Day. We want to clarify that. <laughs> the motion is to defer? Yeah, to March. Okay. okay. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Item 14. Is there a motion to defer to March 5th? Motion to defer to March 5th. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You, you take Shaw. it. Is there a second? Yes, yeah, so move. Commissioner Gill, call the question. Motion carries 7 0. So, in terms of items 15 and 16, they're rendered moot, so do we take any action? Uh, if we could just call and announce a new action, that would be preferable. Item 15, consider an ordinance calling for a special election for the filling of the unexpired term for Ward 6. We don't need a motion. No. I think, oh, I think you're right. No action. Item 16, consider a resolution calling and providing for the holding of a special election in the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma for the purpose of filling the unexpired term of Ward 6, providing for said election to be conducted by the Potawatomi County Election Board and providing for voting by absentee ballot. There will be no action on that item. Brings us to item 17, status update on Interstate 40 Bryan Street interchange. I had asked that this item be placed on the, on the agenda. Uh, I've been asked by a number of people for months and months to please give an update and, uh, and I'm pleased to be able to, to give this update at this point. Shawnee historically has had about 25,000 residents. Uh, we had traditionally, uh, going back many years, we had no extraordinary needs to pursue an aggressive growth strategy. It is true that economic development efforts of the late 60s and 70s solidified that population and began to set the stage for modest growth. Shawnee continued to hover in that population range until the turn of the century. It hurts me to say the turn of the century. Uh, tender age. Both the Kickapoo and the Harrison exits have existed uh, since inception, and uh, this current saga began about four mayors ago when Chuck Mills began to entertain the idea of uh, requesting an additional exit off of I-40 onto Bryan Street. Uh, he met with ODOT, met with Phil Tomlinson, uh, Commissioner Dan Overland, and to engage ODOT in order to perform a preliminary feasibility study. Uh, fast forward a year and a half after the traffic analysis on I-40 as well as Harrison indicated positive feasibility. During the course of my research, I learned that the original improvement of Bryan Street was made at least in part with the idea of relieving traffic on Harrison south of I-40. Linda Peterson, then mayor, held an open meeting to discuss the project. I was there personally and recall that Truman Carter was then the principal objector, but the vast majority of comments were favorable. This was at Grove School. In a letter dated March 22, 2010, Sandra Massey, who is the Historic Preservation Officer of the Sac and Fox, voiced objection based on the adverse effect of active tribal ceremonial sites. On April 16, Gary Ridley, Secretary of the Transportation, requested of Chief Thurman inquiring whether the Sac and Fox would have an interest in participating in any project which might come about. On April 27, 
2010, Chief Thurman, in a letter to Don Sullivan, who is an ODOT engineer, that the project would have profound adverse impact on the historical, cultural, and traditional practices and activities of the nation. On June 15th of 2010, Chief Thurman formally expressed his objection on the part of the tribe to the project. It is also my understanding, <clears throat> although I do not have copies, that the tribe addressed their objections to the Federal Highway Traffic uh, Highway Administration, thereby assigning the project uh, to an indefinite suspended status. Uh, I have in my possession letters of support from the United uh, Kitawa Band of the Cherokee and the Kaw Nation in support of the Sac and Fox objections. Uh, Chief Rhodes assumed her duties approximately at the same time as I did. During the last part of West Maynard's term, City approached her, during the, who was the new chief, during the intervening months to request reconsideration of the tribal position. There was a meeting August 31st, 2016 to discuss the proposed exit. Uh, that meeting was at the Votex and I was not present but I am told that Mr. Carter expressed his desire to move the exit to Brangus Road. It uh, should be noted that existing traffic studies do not support an exit on Brangus, Leo, or Acme. It is my understanding that the proposed improvements do not intrude on any tribal lands. ODOT has presently allocated $1.3 million of funding to the next step in the study, and it should be noted that this next step, as we have expressed to the tribe, is merely a step in the process and the final determination would be, depend on the concurrence of the tribe and the successful completion of the feasibility engineering study by the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. We were recently successful in arranging a meeting with the business committee who I am told has the final say. That meeting was cordial and involved an open exchange of ideas. It was strongly noted that the withdrawal of the letter of, of objection merely allows further engineering to occur. <coughs> it is in no way a final approval after after that meeting, we were told that we would have an answer to our request within two weeks. Uh, there is an eight-year plan update by the Oklahoma Department of Transportation on September 10th. It is entirely possible that failing receipt of the permission letter from the Sac and Fox that this project may not remain on the eight-year plan. If it does not, it is entirely through inaction of the Sac and Fox that it will fail this threshold test brings me to our reasoning as to why the project is, is, in my opinion, of such vital interest to Shawnee. My interest is solely on the grounds of economic development. We, the, we survive at the city exclusively on sales tax. We estimate that approximately 70% of our sales tax receipts come from north of MacArthur Street. So it's fairly obvious when you look at our numbers uh, where our revenue comes from. Uh, if we're going to expand it makes only sense that we're going to expand to the north. Uh, this exit, in, to me, represents low-hanging fruit. Uh, if you think of miles <coughs> of corridor of economic development, it, it's possible that this would open up two or three miles when you consider up and back uh, of economic development, both down Bryan Street to the south of Interstate 40, down 45th Street uh, to the west to Harrison, between 45th Street and Union as well, and on down 45th Street to Kickapoo. That, that potentially represents huge numbers of sales tax receipts to the city, not to mention what it might open up from the north side. Uh, that is the purpose for my thrust, and uh, I think that kind of brings, brings everybody up to date on where we are. We have to date not received the letter, uh, I talked to Senator Sharp uh, through uh, message exchanges today. He has not received the letter, so that's where we are. Uh, they have a tribal election on, I believe, the 26th of this month, and a couple of members at least of the business committee are, are in a runoff uh, to retain their position. So that's where we are. We don't know the status. Uh, we've been told that that uh, the chief had the votes to withdraw the objection. Uh, that has not happened. I'm not in receipt of the letter. ODOT's not, not in receipt of the letter. And, uh, and, Commission, and uh, Senator Sharp is not in receipt of the letter. So that's my update. I, uh, I notice that uh, uh, Commissioner <coughs> Overland is here. Uh, Dan, is there anything that I've left out that you would like to point out? Um, the only thing I would say, uh, Commissioner, Um, I know that for the last 10 years, this project has been somewhat of a focus of the department has stayed focused on it. The city has as well. I know during the meetings, lots of meetings that we've had with the second Boston agent, a number of you commissioners,
members have been in attendance one or many of the meetings. Uh, we continue to feel optimistic that some letter will be received uh, and uh, the next step in uh, trying to bring up uh, an interchange that is what promotes safety in Shawnee would be uh, hopeful. But I can tell you that if we don't receive a letter that retracts the objection, it will be difficult, if not impossible, to keep focusing on it each year via your plan as it, as it evolves. Um, new mayor, uh, new uh, governor will be elected in two years, and uh, um, a new commissioner may be appointed to my seat and could be from Norman or Chichenango or many places else in my district. So um, the window of opportunity for us to continue to be focused on this uh, remains high within the department but another commissioner that comes along may not have the, the uh, attitude that I do. Thank you, Mayor. It, it's been asserted that these funds are portable in that they could be shifted to another project of our, of our choosing. Uh, that, that is absolutely incorrect. Uh, it also has been asserted that this project is on hold because of some inaction uh, based on, on the, this city commission or previous city commissions. That is also not true. So that's the extent of my update. Okay, I guess here is where we're going to have some differences, Mayor. One, I heard you say that you met with the business committee of the SAC and Fox Nation. And when you have a couple of individuals that show up, it would be kind of like us if there was only two or three of us that showed up, which was the case. Um, and, the, of course, we'd never authorized or approved any type of meeting with the Sac and Fox Nation that I'm aware of. So, Well, um, there was resolution number 6380 adopted in, on the first day of March of 2010 by the city commission. Oh, I have uh, Endorsing the project. So I it has that. been endorsed. Uh, I, I'm the one that did not invite you to the meeting. And if there's someone that you need to jump on about it, then it's me. I didn't invite you intentionally because I felt like I knew your opposition to the project and uh, I felt like you would poison the well. Well, While I we're certainly on the subject, appreciate I think that. your comments to Justin at the last meeting were totally inappropriate in terms of we evaluate the actions of personnel in executive session and uh, and I had a, a cause of action for that, and I don't appreciate your comments no, here. Didn't. We evaluated uh, Mr. If Parrott's I poison the well, that's because it's from a tribal perspective. We evaluated you are considering Mr. several factors here, Mayor. <clears throat> One is the executive order 13007, which is Indian Sacred Sites. Another is the Religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. I didn't say anything about what their causes were. All I've done is simply state You're pressuring the, facts. the tribe and I saying that it's a tribe. lack of their commitment, but it, it's their people that's making this decision. And, they, and they're entitled to make this decision, and, the, and our the people that we represent are entitled to then know why allow them why to make it without make. your judgment. They're, my, my job is to pursue what's beneficial to the city of Shawnee, and so is yours. And that's what I'm doing, because that could easily lead to litigation. We'll leave that for others to decide. The fact of the matter is we did Justin Erickson's evaluation. Everybody on this commission received a form. Everyone completed it except you. You yes. forfeited your right to do that evaluation. And that was only because I was ill that day. And this isn't about his evaluation. This was about me requesting to be given certain information. Your comments were of a personal nature and job related, and they were out of order. Item 18, acknowledge the sales tax report. I'll be brief, um, but I also wanted to say in the September meeting, you will have a complete, um, all the numbers that are based on our year end at 6.30 on an accrual basis. I'm working on that now. Um, but our August sales tax was $1,559,000 and we were up uh, just uh, 29,000 or 1.26%. So use tax was up, um, but right. for the two months so far this year, we are meeting budget, but not much more. That's better than some of the folks. I'll take it. The next meeting, 
maybe not the next meeting, but uh, the second meeting in September, you'll have a complete history of the top sales categories for the year. Thank you. And Cindy, how's that Amazon tax doing for us? It's it's been doing about what I thought about twenty five thirty five, twenty five to thirty thousand a month. Great. It'll be interesting to see the holidays. All right. Thanks. Item nineteen, administrative report. Chief yes, Mason, we've got one tonight. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the 2017 Edward Burns Memorial Grant. Uh, it was open for local law enforcement. We were allocated $20,979. It is uh, mandated that we share this grant. We have shared this grant with the Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Office for the past 10 years. and. Shawnee Police Department will receive $10,500 of this grant money. Pottawatomie County Sheriff's Office will receive $10,479 of this grant money. And uh, we're actually looking at this money right now, uh, looking at some uh, all electric motorcycles for traffic enforcement, which having said that, this Friday at 10 a.m., anyone who would like to see the demonstration of those in our parking lot, they will be here with two, two fully loaded police package motorcycles at 10 a.m. Friday, and uh, the commissioners and staff are welcome to come take a look. And I'd like to put a plug in this Saturday for cops and kids. After you come from Blue Zones, come over to Cops and Kids, one to four. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Cops and Kids is a really good deal. If you are not familiar with, it, you need to get that way. Justin, do you not have a report? No, no, sir. Any new business? No, sir. No new business. Commissioner, comments. I would just like to uh, express uh, that we had lost one of a, a former commissioner and former mayor last week, and it was fitting uh, that we got some of this rodeo stuff. This was his big. Uh, he really loved it. It was Jerry L's Redney uh, passed away last week. And he made it to every one of them with the exception of the 25th. Uh, his health prevented him from doing that. But I just wanted to give uh, a shout out about for Jerry. It's simply it's good to be back. Good to have you back, man. You think the, so? Uh, <laughs> the comment I'd make is uh, we do appreciate the uh, uh, Commissioner Olsen from all of his help and all of his work here in Shawnee. And uh, I, for one, uh, have our, I'm totally sold on the I-40 Bryan Street exit. And we'll do anything I can to help the mayor or anybody to help you on that project. So I'm committed to that project. And I'd sure like to see it completed. Mason got my uh, got my thunder while he was up here. Blue Zone <laughs> Saturday morning, uh, cops and kids Saturday afternoon. Hopefully everyone can can make that. Uh, the the Bryan Street exit, I just that's that's so vital I think to the city of Shawnee and, and our growth. And I, I hope the the, <coughs> the Sac and Fox Nation, uh, their their administration, and the people of the Sac and Fox Nation can can all get together and get together with the city and, and ODOT and the county and <coughs> figure out how to make, how to make this work. And I think the, the meeting that uh, happened a few weeks ago seemed very positive and uh, I, I just uh, I hope the, the Sack and Fox people can uh, can all talk and we can we can make it a, a great thing for, for everyone involved. Thank you. Commissioner Shaw. Um. First, I have a question for Justin. Justin, um, earlier when we were talking about the Bertha um, and a young commission, Chambers, will we have signage here on uh, Yes, ma'am. I don't know if we, Good. hopefully within two weeks. If not, it'll be a, at your, at your, maybe your second meeting in September. We'll, we will um, display uh, a sign that designates it, this commission chambers as such, and we'll probably also f um, frame a resolution as well. So. So those uh, here 20 years from now can, can learn about Bertha Ann and, and uh, who she was and what she meant to the city. Great. Thank you. Um, I know there's a number of work progressing on projects throughout Shawnee. Tim, 
I, I have noticed that and I do appreciate uh, your reports. I'd also like to recognize Don Lynch for his lifetime achievement that he recently got from uh, the Oklahoma Emergency Management Association. Well done. And then, Mayor, you know, I, I'm not at war here with you. I really don't want to be, but um, when it comes to tribal issues, you just aren't the person who understands them. So from that perspective, I would just like to educate you on two things. The Sac and Fox, it is their decision and their right to make decisions, and let's allow them to do that. It's my understanding this last week that their business committee did meet Justin, that they did decide that they, that it would not at this point in time be in their best interest. They have asked for that to, uh, the chief did ask for it to come back up again. They are going to uh, revisit that issue again and make a decision on it. And based on whatever they decide, that's their decision, uh, not mine. I did ask just that you include me in meetings. So I appreciate that. Um, and Mayor, that's what I asked for. And that's what I'm still asking for. So having said that, thank you. I'm very happy that we named the commission chamber first hand young chamber. Uh, she and I go back uh, many, 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 many years when I was a soap jerk, right straight across the street here at my dad's drugstore. And a lot of the city employees would come over there and get five cent ice cream cones and five cent cokes back in the fifties. Thank you. Uh, my purpose in, for inviting uh, Commissioner Rutherford to the meeting was precisely because I am not well versed in Indian <coughs> matters, and he is a member of the Potawatomi tribe as, as such. He is versed in those items. This meeting is adjourned. We will call the meeting to order of the Shawnee Airport Authority. <coughs> we have a quorum. Item one, consider approval of the consent agenda. So Moved by Commissioner Herod. Second. Second by Commissioner Rutherford. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Item 2 discussion and consideration of approving a new lease between Shawnee Airport Authority and Wesley Elliott, DBA, Oklahoma Air, LLC. Keenan. Hello, Mayor. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, real quick, if I might, while I'm up here, I just want to plug the, uh, the air show before I start on this agenda item. It's October 7th this year. It's always the first weekend of Saturday, but it lands on October 7th. Start at, which, that is a Saturday. It starts at 8 a.m. And the show this year is going to start a little bit earlier. It's going to start at 11 as opposed to 12 last year. And the reason for that is OBU, every other year OBU has a home game the same day as we have our air show and so their, their game starts at one o'clock so we're going to try to get everybody in get the air show started uh, get it over with and, and so people can go and then also I, I made the reason to do it uh, for doing it a little early is we have to close MacArthur Street yes MacArthur between Leo and Airport Drive during the air show which will be from 11 to about 1230 and so that is a little inconvenient for the visitors to the, the OBU game so uh, for those out there just uh, make a uh, different route on, on that day so is this planes trains and automobiles yeah oh yes plane same as last year trains <laughs> planes and automobiles were eight to two um, the depot I believe starts at 12 or one o'clock don't quote me on that and uh, uh, of course the the auto is the Knights Auto Club that's gonna be at both events so should be a good day as long as the weather holds up mm -hmm. uh, the lease agreement tonight is between the Airport Authority <coughs> and Oklahoma Air LLC. Um, Oklahoma Air LLC is a newly formed LLC started by Wesley Elliott uh, of McLeod, Oklahoma, and he's been a tenant of ours for over a year at this point. And uh, here currently he wishes to open up a flight instruction uh, uh, operation out at the airport. Well, he wants to do flight instruction, he wants to do aircraft rental, and he wants to do uh, uh, 
oh, pilot services, meaning hold seminars and hold classes and that, that types of things for the, for the aviation community uh, around Shawnee. Um, so tonight what we're voting on uh, is a lease uh, between the two parties. The lease does two things. Uh, it allows Mr. Elliott to lease the upstairs office that is directly above my office. It's the only upstairs uh, at the terminal. Uh, this, this space hasn't been uh, leased in a couple of years. Matter of fact, the last people who did was a flight school, so it's pretty uh, uh, convenient for, for that type of operation. Uh, and number two, it allows him to conduct the commercial activity, which I, had, I just talked about, the flight instruction and so on. Um, the airport board uh, did re does recommend approval. They did so at the October, excuse me, uh, August 16th meeting. Uh, staff recommends the approval. And uh, if you look on your memo, there's uh, some key aspects to the lease. And uh, I can go over a few of them if you would like me to. Um, but if not, I'll answer any questions or any. Is this contingent upon his obtaining any credentials? Uh, yes, sir. He, uh, what we're requiring of him is an insurance policy that meets the insurance requirements in Schedule A of the lease and a registration certificate from the state of Oklahoma that does ensure that he is... What about with the FAA? With the FAA? Uh, there's no FAA uh, documentation necessary in this matter. And staff recommendation yes. to approve? Yes, sir. Are there any other questions? Is there any liability concerns we need to consider there? I don't believe so. Uh, I think combined with the insurance requirements that we're requiring of him, okay. uh, coupled with our existing policies, should be uh, sufficient coverage. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the lease? So moved. Commissioner Shaw. Second. Okay. Commissioner Harrod. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Is there any new business? No, sir, there's none. This meeting is adjourned, and we call to order the Shawnee Municipal Authority. <clears throat> there is a quorum. Item number one consider approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Gillum. Second. Second by Commissioner Bouchon. Call the question. Motion carries 7 0. Is there any new business? No, sir. This meeting is adjourned, and this meeting is adjourned.